ready to take your workflow from complex to simplified, I want you to stay tuned because today I've invited the folks from HoneyBook to show you exactly how to set up your HoneyBook program to ensure that your client process is seamless. And if you're already a HoneyBook user, you want to watch this because you might be missing some steps. And if you're new to HoneyBook, this is definitely a tutorial you want to check out before you sign up. Hi, I'm Jodi Ann Rowe, I'm the founder of the Event Certificate, and I work with event planners and wedding planners to help them turn clicks into clients. So I'm gonna just really throw it all over to Marika right now, who's gonna show you the tutorial. So you won't be seeing this face anymore, but she's gonna show you exactly what processes, what features you need to have set up to ensure that working with your clients is a seamless process. Okay, everyone, welcome to HoneyBook. Today we're gonna to be going over how HoneyBook can help you as a planner manage your business. So, quick elevator pitch for HoneyBook. What are we? HoneyBook is an all-in-one platform to help you manage your business. So again, we're gonna be going over how this can help you as planners from collecting leads and inquiries automatically all the way through getting that final payment in and that event completed. So today what we're going to look at are a few key features that are going to be helpful for you. Now, everything in HoneyBook is based on projects. So a project is basically the container that holds everything related to a particular job with a particular client. Now, projects in HoneyBook might be created by you. You can do that manually. If someone like stops you on the street and says, hey, you look like a nice wedding planner. I would like to book your services. You can absolutely collect their information, input that stuff manually into HoneyBook and create that project or they might be created automatically as well if you have our contact form installed. So that's what we're going to look at today, kind of getting that set up so that any inquiries that come in via that contact form will automatically create those projects for you so you don't have to do that. Now it's important to note that there can be no client communication at all unless you have those projects in place. So that it really is that foundational element that you need set up in order to start communicating with anyone, getting payments, getting signatures, and pro managing those projects at all. So we wanna make sure those are in place. And again, we're gonna look at how to do that automatically with the contact form. And then what happens after that as well and how HoneyBook can kind of help you manage the project along the way. Before we do dive into the contact form though, I want to look at a couple things to make sure that you have set up in place before anything else happens that will really help you sort of get set up for success and save you time in the long run. So what I wanna look at first are what we call templates in HoneyBook. Now this could mean a number of different things because we have a lot of different template types, but I wanna head over to our template section and show you some of those things that we have available for you. So to get to my HoneyBook templates, I'm gonna to click tools up here and Templates. So quickly, what are templates? Templates allow you to create the framework for various parts of your process, your workflow, your documentation, so that you don't need to start from scratch every single time you do a thing. So a couple in particular that I wanna look at. First of all, I wanna look at packages. What these are are your pricing packages. So let's say that you have a couple different services that are grouped together quite a bit, or maybe you have you know, your basic package which has items or services A, B, and C, and then your premium package with services A, B, C, D, E, a little bit more expensive. We can create these as package templates to then use as building blocks for other things moving forward. So let's just take a look at what this might look like. Now, we'll notice, I'm going to aggressively point out this teeny little tab on the left-hand side here. This is very important. If I click that open, again, in any template section, this is going to show me all the templates that I have. And you'll notice, I can really have as many as I'd like. In this case, we are looking at those pricing package templates. So these are all of my pricing package templates that I've created for myself in advance. You'll also notice the add template button is right up here at the top. So make sure to click that, our little file drawer tab over here on the left and add template if you wanna start building these out. But I wanna look at what we have right here. So let's take our general services basic package and general services premium package that we've already created for ourselves. You'll notice that we have our title up here. Everything you see here is gonna be clickable and editable. If you're starting from scratch, uh, you'll be able to just click on these fields and type in to make any edits that you do need. So we'll see our title of the package. We've added a little description for the package overall 
and we've added a price for that package. Then you'll see all of those individual services that are, that are associated with this basic package. So in this case, we have a phone consult and similarly, we can change the title of this. We can add or remove the descriptions and you'll see that you can add a little imagery as well to make this nice and beautiful. So we've added a few different services that are relevant to this basic package here. If you are building these out on your own, you'll notice this add new item button here. All I need to do is click that and type in the name of a new service that's associated with this package if I want to build this out on my own. And every time you hover over anything in HoneyBook, you'll see a few things come up. So just to note what those are right now, you'll see our trash can if we need to delete anything. And you'll also notice our little six dot icon, which means I can drag and drop to re rearrange things if I'd like to do that as well. So we have our basic package. I also want to look at our premium package. Again, something we've created for ourselves in advance, but very easy to build out. This is going to look pretty similar. We have all of those existing services for the basic package, plus a few things. So you can see that we've created kind of a range of tiers, of pricing tiers, that we can now use as building blocks for a couple other things. So the other template that I want to look at right now are your brochure templates. Now, of course, we have all of our other file types in here, so I encourage you guys to come in, click through this and see what's available. It's really, really handy to have a lot of these built out in advance for yourself. But based on the flow that we're gonna look at today, I want to check out our brochure template so you can see what we can do with these type of files. So the brochure in HoneyBook is built to kind of showcase your services, but it can do that in a number of different ways. A lot of people use brochures in HoneyBook as what a lot of people might refer to as proposals, right? That kind of very beginning stage of communicating with a client to tell them, here's what I have to offer. Let me know what you're interested in. So you will, you might've noticed that we do actually have a file called a proposal file. Our proposal, just for reference, is a combination of an invoice and a contract into one file. It's an all-in-one booking file. So that is gonna be like at the end of the booking process before the actual project begins. So the brochure and the proposal are gonna be a little bit different. At the beginning of a relationship with a client, you're gonna be want to, you're gonna to wanna to send something like this brochure. Now you'll notice a few things here. We've had this broken down into a few different sections. Again, we've already created this for ourselves. We can add beautiful imagery to this brochure to showcase events we've done in the past or any services we've done in the past. We can add a stories about ourselves, so any text that we need. And we can always edit any of this sort of background color, the fonts, the, fo the colors of the fonts, all sorts of stuff you can make changes to. You'll notice if I highlight my text that I have here, lots of formatting options. So if I wanted to build this out a little bit further, if I had other images that I wanted to use or other text that I wanted to add, all I would do is just click this little plus button that appears at the bottom of one of these blocks. So each of these individual things that you're looking at is called a block. Let's add another block. Just click that plus button and you'll see all of these options. So our content blocks, for example, allow you to add text in a few different formats, images in a few different formats. We can add questions that we'd like our potential clients to answer, which we'll look at in a sec, and we can add services. Now I already have a block for this, but you'll notice that this pulls up an add new item button. So in this way, I can already start throwing in those pricing packages that I've created or individual items as well. And I'll show you sort of how that plays out for your client too. But let's just delete this for now because we already have this great brochure in place. This block that you're looking at here is one of those services blocks. So what I've done is already add that basic package that we already saw and that premium package. So when my client receives this brochure, what they'll be able to do is select one of these. They can say, I want the basic package or I want the premium package. This is not gonna be a committal situation for them. It's just them saying, this is what I'm interested in. And how you can decide how they should interact with this Click this little gear icon up here in the top of the services block that you're looking at, and you'll be able to determine sort of, again, how they can interact with this. So we do want our clients to be able to select one of these. So we'll say they allow them to select items, but we don't really want them to be able to select both, right? That would sort of muddy the waters. So we really want to make sure that only one selection is required, but only one. So I'm going to say at least one selection is required but I don't want to check allow more than one selection because we want them to pick either the basic 
or the premium package. So I'm gonna leave that as such for now. And once you have added, let's just take a look at this add new item. So you'll be able to see all of these items that I've used in the past, as well as any pricing packages I've created for myself. So I can build this out with as many packages as I need. It doesn't need to just be two. It can be six, it can be 10, it can be three. So we can create these pricing packages for ourselves, again, to kind of use as those Lego building blocks and then build out our brochures like we see here and other file types as well. But I'm just gonna leave this at these two. I'll remove our little blank item. And you'll also notice that another section I had here is something like a la carte items. Now this is totally up to you and your business if you allow them to add maybe additional hours of service or other, you know, maybe just kind of a la carte services that you do offer that don't automatically go into the pricing packages you've created. So in this case, we've added just individual quote unquote items here instead of those whole built out packages, right? We've added an additional day of assistant, a design and inspiration board, an album, obviously not relevant to everyone, but you can create these to be anything you need them to be. So if someone wanted to select the premium package here, as well as an additional day of on-site assistant, they can do that. Now, again, in this sort of build your own section, we can change how the client can interact with this particular block. So this will be separate from that services block we just saw. Now, in this case, we do want to allow the client to select items again, and they can select more than one. So we'll check that. However, none of these are required. So we don't need to make sure that at least one selection is picked. And we can choose to allow the client to choose a quantity. So if they want two day of onsite assistance, they can come in and change that quantity for you at $500 a pop. Now, finally in these brochures, you can also add questions. So if you have additional questions that you want your clients to answer when they receive this file type, if you want, you know, in this case we've added the confirmation of when we need to make sure that we know we're working together. If they have like that kind of date where they need to decide. If they have a color scheme, we've added a question for that. If we want a section for any other questions or comments. Basically, all we're doing here is once again, clicking that plus button, and this time using our questions block. And they can be in any number of formats, whatever makes the most sense for your client. So build this out as much as you need to really suit your business. So we've now created this brochure file, and there's one more e template that I wanna look at before we proceed. So I'm gonna head back to our template section and just real quick, email templates. Make sure these are set up. These are real time savers. You can use these on one-off communications with your clients. Again, we'll click our file drawer tab to find everything. This just helps you streamline, right? If you have similar language that you use over and over, instead of needing to retype those emails every single time, you can create all of those email templates in advance. Or you can create emails that always go out with brochures or emails that always go out with contracts. Any sort of situation that you might use, again, that similar language, just create that email template for yourself. Create these how we need. And now we have sort of the core of our templates. So now that we have those set up, I want to look at those contact forms that I mentioned. So I'm going to head to our tools section and contact forms. So what is a contact form? You're probably familiar with this concept. <laughs> Contact forms allow you to create the set of questions that you need a client to answer. Most of the time, this is going to be used to collect leads, right? So we can either embed these on a website if we have a website, or we can also create these and just send a link to someone. So you don't need to worry about code at all, but you can still have this nice, beautiful contact form with all of the questions you need them to answer. I'm going to look at an existing contact form that we have. So you'll notice our little sidebar over here. I'm going to click our contact forms tab to show me all of the existing contact forms we have. And this account does have a lot, but I want to pull up the contact form that we have ready to go. So our planner contact form. Now, when you're creating contact forms, you're going to notice some similar structure to what we were using in the brochure. Similar blocks, we can create our beautiful imagery here, import some pictures, add text on top of that, and then add those questions that we need our clients to answer. So in this case, we've had some very basic stuff here, but you know, you always wanna make sure that our email address and full name are in there, but if we need their phone number as well, 
project date, etc. Now, a couple things that you'll notice if I'm hovering over this question. You'll see, in some cases, this little kind of linked icon. What that shows you is where that information is going to pull into. So in this case, our project date will actually pull into the project details that get created. Remember how I said someone submitting a contact form, that will automatically create a project in HoneyBook for you? This information will automatically pull into those details when you see that linked icon. Now the other thing is our little gear icon once again. This allows you to edit the question type and decide if that question is required for your client to answer. So when they're submitting that form, they will not be able to submit it if they have not filled out this project date field. So we can build these out as we need. Again, we see our little plus button here to add additional questions, to add additional content. So those are the text if we just want blocks of text or imagery as well but largely this is gonna be used to collect the information that you need. So make sure that you are including everything that's super relevant, that you can just take a really quick look at these inquiries that come in and scrub your leads right off the bat. You don't need to get on a 30 minute phone call to know if they're gonna be good business for you. You'll have all that information right off the bat assuming your contact form is set up the way that you want. Now, the other question that I wanna point out here is this what type of project? This question is coming from our suggested list of questions. Now the project type is basically, you know, what type of business this is. So let's say that you're an event planner and that might be weddings or it might be corporate events or it might be birthday parties. We can set up these project types to suit your business. That's just gonna be in your company settings section. So you can set up that list and then including this question in your contact form is going to let your clients select what option they want you for. So if they want you for a wedding, they can just select that from your list. So I'm gonna just remove a couple things here. We don't you know, need all of this. We wanna make sure it's short and to the point. Now the other thing about this contact form, you'll notice our little design icon here. This is how you can make it all beautifully and brand, beautiful and branded. We can change the colors of the text and the background. The fonts, of course, can be updated. So make this the way you want it to be. Now, as I mentioned with contact forms, you can do two things in terms of sharing. You can embed these on your website. So all I'm gonna do for that, click our publish button up here when everything's ready to go, copy this code that you see here, head to your website and embed that wherever you need it to be. Or if you don't feel like embedding at all, uh, and or you have maybe social channels that you want this linked to or something like that, all you need to do is get a direct link. So we have this direct link here, which I can copy this link or just kind of pop it open for myself. And this link that I see up here, I can use that in, again, my, maybe my Instagram, you know, I can do like a link tree in Instagram, or I can include this on my Facebook page or in email footers. Then I don't even need to worry about embedding this at all. My clients will be able to access this just by popping open this web page and submit their form just like that. So let's say that we now have our contact form set up and we want to actually take this a step further. It's awesome that when someone submits an inquiry via this form, it automatically creates a project for us. But I also want to make sure that my potential clients get a brochure right off the bat, that brochure we just created. We have a beautiful tool called Workflows. So I'm going to head to our tools and Workflows here. Now what workflows do are allow you to automate steps in your process, but everything that you send out can be as branded as you need it to be. It can be customized with your language so it sounds like you, doesn't sound like a robot, because that is very crucial. And workflows can do two things. They can automatically be triggered by contact form submissions, or they can be applied individually to projects as well. I'm just gonna create a workflow right now that automatically sends out a brochure to someone submitting a contact form inquiry. So all I do, create a new workflow template here, and now you'll see the options that we have. A couple different things. Our workflows can automatically send out a couple file types, like a questionnaire or a brochure. They can just send an email, so maybe you want that inquiry to just say, get a like, thank you for submitting, I'll be back to you soon. Or they can create a task for you. But what we wanna do is automatically send a brochure and an email as soon as someone submits that contact form. So I'm gonna use my send brochure as my first step here. 
Now this is why we want to make sure that we have our templates in place first. So our action is sending a brochure, but we'll notice that we can select the brochure template and the email templates. So this is why, again, we want to make sure these are in place before we set up any workflows. So this AI brochure was the one that we were just looking at. That's the one that I want to go out as soon as someone submits an inquiry via that contact form. So I'm going to keep that selected. And then we can choose whatever email template makes sense with this brochure. So maybe you want to say thank you for submitting. And we know that this thank you is perfectly set up for that initial inquiry. So I'm going to select that thank you email. Then when does this go out? I want this to go out immediately as soon as that inquiry comes in. So I'm going to say that is, this is zero days. And in this case, it's just after activating the workflow. So as soon as something triggers this workflow, that zero days will kick in. If I wanted this maybe 24 hours after the workflow was activated, I would say like one day later. But in this case, we want immediately after activating that workflow. And then we can also choose to either send this out automatically or approve it. So if we want to make sure that we take one final look at the email that goes out, we can choose to approve before sending. We can do that as well. But I'm going to say I just want this automatically. So we'll say that this is our event workflow. And you'll notice this little plus button. This means I can add additional steps to this if I'd like. So if I wanted to automatically send a brochure immediately and then maybe send an email um, you know, a week later, so a week after activating the workflow or a week after the previous step is complete, you can kind of set this up in a few different ways. So you can really build this out as much or as little as you need. I'm just going to keep this one really basic and just have it send that brochure. So I'll delete this second step here and head back. Now, oops, stay. make sure we save it. I forgot to do that. And now I'll head back to our workflow kind of main page here. We want to make sure that this workflow automatically gets triggered with a contact form. So you'll see a couple things here. We have this automate via contact form section. This is why that project type question is really important because we can choose to activate different workflows based on the project type that's selected. So if we want our you know, wedding planner contact form, or our wedding planner project type to trigger one workflow, but the birthday event planner project type to trigger a different workflow with like a different, with different email language, a different brochure, we can choose what project type triggers what workflow. Now in this case, let's just say I really want this to be the workflow for every contact form. I'm just gonna remove these individual project types and with our event workflow, instead of selecting an individual one, I'll just say this is the default. This is what everyone is gonna get as soon as they submit that contact form. Okay, we've now set that up as the default. So now what I wanna do is hop over to the client view and see what this looks like. We're gonna fill out a contact form as a client, as a potential client, we're going to receive that brochure automatically via this workflow, and then we'll see kind of how that all goes from there. Just going to pop open our direct link to the contact form that we want. And now I am going to pretend to be a client filling out this contact form for you. Great. Now I'm going to send this off. So I've sent this off as a client as a, or as a potential client. So I want to hop back into my, my as the vendor's HoneyBook account really fast to see if I open my projects tab here, we have a new active project. So I didn't have to manually create all this information for myself. We'll hop into our project workspace here and see everything that our fake client put in. We have the name, her Leslie Yep's project. We have this email that automatically got sent out with that brochure. Your inquiry information, so you see all that info in here. And you'll also notice our details tab has all of that information as well. So it automatically pulls all of that in for us. But now I want to hop back to our client view to see what that brochure looks like for them. So here is my client's 
Gmail inbox. This is our fake client. We set up that workflow. So she submitted a contact form and immediately got our email and brochure. So I'm gonna just click view brochure and see what this looks like for my client. Great. This is exactly what we set up. She sees all of this beautiful imagery here. And then we see, okay, I need to select one of the following. I want the basic package or I want the premium package. All she has to do, check that box after looking at what, she, what the options are. And then again, we have our a la carte items. So maybe she wants you know, those two additional day of onsite assistance. We check that box, we add a quantity. This is all your client needs to do. It is very self-explanatory. Then she'll also see these questions that we wanted her to fill out. So when do we need confirmation? We can pick a date there, pink, great, no, fantastic. Finally, she's selected the things that she is interested in. Again, this is non-committal. This is just her saying, this is what I'm interested in. She can review her selections. So she's made the choice of the premium package and a couple additional day of onsite assistance. So she can see how that all prices out. And when she's ready, she will submit this. So now she's submitted this brochure. I want to head back to your side of things, the vendor view, to see what happens. OK, so we're back in your HoneyBook view. I want to open that project that we have in place here for Leslie. So that's this guy right here. So she has now submitted a brochure. Now, if I head to my Files tab, you will see both that brochure that got submitted and you'll notice this draft of a proposal. So once again, a proposal in HoneyBook is the file that combines an invoice, so that payment file, and a contract. It is our all-in-one booking file. So what this has done is automatically draft a proposal for you based on the selections in the brochure. So I can send this out as is, or I can make any changes that I need based on maybe I've had another follow-up conversation with Leslie and I need to make a couple changes. So let's open this proposal and see what this looks like. Okay, so here you go. We have a couple sections of this. You have your payment plan, your proposal itself, so those are the services, your payment plan, which we'll look at, and then the contract. So this items list, everything they're getting charged for is again going to vary based on what they selected in that brochure. So we see that premium package and that additional two day of onsite assistance. Everything's gonna total up there for me so I can see that. And like I said, I can always make edits if I need. If she decides she actually only wants one additional day of onsite assistant, I can always make that change before sending this file out to her to make those payments or add additional things as well. Now the other thing you can do here is decide when these payments should be due. So she's ready to commit to you, but when do we need these payments due? You'll notice this payment schedule and there's a few things to note here. Pretty much every field is going to be dynamic or can be dynamic in some way. So let's say that we want this to be another payment. I'm gonna make this a three payment schedule. So you'll notice that these all divided equally. It added another one and kind of like divvied it all up. That's because these amount fields right now are set to do just that and divide equally among however many payments you have set up. But we can also do percentages. So maybe this very first payment should just be like a 20% deposit. We can do 20%, so I don't need to do that math. And these two payments still set to divide equally, we'll just divide that remainder. Or we also have that custom amount option if we know that the first payment is 1500, great, kind of a flat, Deposit, we can do that as well. And then the due dates can also be dynamic based on things like when the invoice is sent or when the project is occurring. So if I click that when field and our due date drop down, you'll see a few different options. So let's set this up. I want this very first payment to be actually due when I send this file, the very day I send this invoice. So I'm gonna select invoice date for that. So that's gonna pull in today's date. Payment number two, I'll click on that field. This one I maybe want like halfway between when I send this file and when that project is set to occur. So we'll say midway, and this will calculate whatever that kind of halfway date is. And then finally, our fixed date. So this has pulled in our project date, that's fine. So that's gonna be kind of like a non-dynamic option, but we can also do custom, maybe like eh, one week, 
before the project date. So that will pull in a week before March 21st, right? So I can build this out as much or as little as I need with as many payments. It can be one payment if I just delete these two, or I can build it out to five, 10 payments, whatever you need. Now below that, you'll see the contract. This is great because it is basically, you know, a standard word processor in a lot of ways. I can copy and paste language in here if I've used it in other contracts in the past, but you'll also see these little contract fields. Now I encourage you to head to our help center to get a little bit more information on these, but basically what they allow you to do is either pull out information from the project details or my company details. So in this case, like we have this field that has automatically pulled in our client's name. I didn't have to add that. And that's because we've set that up as a custom field that pulls that information in. I can also use these fields to require information from my clients. So if I want to make sure that they like initial a section after reading it, I'm going to say initial. All I do is click this teeny little button up here in the top formatting bar that says field options when I hover over it. And I'm going to say this field name doesn't need to pull from anywhere. This is totally brand new. So we'll say this is initials create a custom field, and then we'll leave this field value blank because we want our client to fill this in. And then we'll say that they must fill this out. So if they try to sign this contract without, sign, without filling out this field, it will bop them back up to where this field is and prompt them to fill it out. Now at the very bottom here, you'll see a couple automatically added signature lines, one for you and one for your client. So when they do receive this, they'll be able to either uh, like draw it in if they're on their phone or use a mouse to make their signature or just type it in. Either way, legally binding, it's really similar to like a DocuSign situation. Now, when I'm sending any file in HoneyBook, I'll have this review email option. Oops, we don't really need that. So let's say review email. This pulls in one of those email templates. So again, really handy to have those set up. It's pulled in our proposal template. But of course, I can make any changes to that that I need, or you'll see this templates drop down to select a different one. When I'm ready, I'll just go ahead and send that off. So now Leslie is going to get this as a really easy to open file. Now, obviously she has a few different payments in here, so we're not gonna rely on her to remember that, you know, payment number two was due on February 2nd or whatever we set up, we also have the option of just setting up some automatic payment reminders that can go out to all of our clients. So we never have to remember to remind them. So really quickly, just wanna point those out. If we click our profile picture on the top right corner and company settings, these payment reminders will be under preferences. But I wanna look at the very bottom here, payment reminders. I can choose to automatically send payment reminders seven days before the day of a payment or if a payment is missed. So if I want all three, great. If I just want you know, one or the other, I can choose which ones I'd like. And I can customize the language that gets sent out. So we can say blah, 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 change this however we need, and then it will automatically pull in the project name, due date, and amount of that payment that's coming up. So that way you don't need to remember to remind any of your clients, they will automatically always now receive this seven days before the due dates or two days after if it's an outstanding payment that they've missed. Okay, and then the final thing that I wanted to talk about is I know that a lot of you are going to be interested in getting like reviews after projects are created. So there's a couple ways to do that. First of all, we can always set up one of those email templates that says something, something to the effect of, let's just create one right now. So I'm gonna say add template. And one cool thing you can do with email templates is you can automatically pull in your client name. So that's this little button right here. So that will just dynamically pull in wh whoever's name we're sending this to. So obviously this is very, very basic, but we can set this up to however we need to kind of solicit those reviews from people. So now that that's there and I don't need to recreate this every time I'm asking for a review, I can either head into an individual project. So I'm just getting to my projects tab. We have some of these completed projects over here. Maybe they, I want them to send, uh, send me a review. So I'm just gonna pop open one of these. And now we'll also see our version of the workspace, right? With our activity feed. And I wanna start a brand new message to them 
with that email template that I just created. So that was our review request email. So I can do this manually, but it does save me a couple seconds here and send that off instead of needing to recreate it. Or at the very beginning of a project, I can apply a workflow. If I don't already have one in place, maybe I've created a workflow. So I'm heading back to my workflow section. I'm gonna create a new workflow template. This one is just gonna be one. It's just gonna be an email. And we'll use our review request email. And maybe we wanna make sure that this gets sent out seven days after the project date. So let's head back to any of our projects here. And we have one here already, so they might have automatically been assigned a workflow, right? If that was something that created was created with the contact form. So we just need to make sure to remove anything that's in there. And then we can add this new one. So I wanna apply this review request workflow. So they will automatically receive this request email seven days after their project is complete. And I think that's it. So hopefully that was helpful. I wanna point out one more thing. Always feel free to head to help.honeybook.com. This is our help center. We have articles and videos on how to, uh, a little bit deeper dives into all these features. I know we went a little bit fast today, so make sure to check that out. Or you can always get in touch with our concierge team, that's our support team, by clicking this question mark icon at the bottom of any HoneyBook page. Just click message us and they are always happy to help. All right, I think that's it for me. Thanks guys. Marika, thank you so much for that tutorial. Oh, that was very useful. I saw so many things that I didn't even know that existed in the program. Now guys, of course, if you have any questions, drop them below. I'm also gonna provide a link to the Honeybrook program where you can get a free trial as well as 50% off if you sign up. Now, of course, Marika is also here to answer any questions for you and if you haven't already subscribed, hit that button so that you can get weekly business tips like this one to help grow your event planning business.